I recently got me a nice little uh, antique bench top lathe and so I want to do a little bit of light work on it so it didn't come with a uh, quick change tool post it came with the original antique tool post so I wanted to have something that I could change over a little bit easier so I got me a quick change tool post off the uh, internet and it's a CME tools Dot com and I've already had it open playing with it a little bit it definitely won't fit like a South Bend lathe or something like that that has the old old style tool post tool holders and so what I ended up doing is cutting the uh, ball off of a hitch and machine that down so I have me a little part and then just made me a adapter plate and so now we got a nice little tool post rest for our quick change tool post so, if we look inside our kit, like I said, I already had this open, so I figured out real quick that fresh out of the box, uh, it ain't going to work. And it's also really, really sloppy. And I guess you get what you pay for kind of deal. So, let me just show you. Uh, right here, so there's the little holder. So, if you put it on and you pick the right size bolt that you machine for and you put its little cam in there looking good so far let's lock it down on there and so just out of the pack when you lock it down it doesn't move and you can see my little handle is already loose because I've been wiggling on it trying to get it to lock down and it's not going to lock down so I got to fix that as well because it's kind of cheap but this thing won't spin it's supposed to spin like that with it locked down tight so when you lock it down it won't spin so flaw number one but we can resolve that by putting that washer in there so I got a washer so let's take this back off put our washer down in there and now we can pinch down on the washer and it gives it a little bit of movement so now let's set it up so we'll lock it down Get it set, that washer sitting just right. Hopefully. You got to get the washer kind of centered up in there to get it to where it's free. Uh, there we go. So we're almost there. All right. So we got her locked down. And now it'll move. All right. So that problem solved. Now we can get it to move. So if we set a tool on there, let's say we're going to set a little boring tool on there so we put it down on it so let's get a little close up in here and see what's going on all right so looking down on the post what you can see is that when I tighten that up see it bent the little handle because I've been mean to it here trying to get it to tighten up so I'm about to strip the threads out so I got to fix that but when you go to tighten it up if you tighten it up even real tight you can see that the uh, it still moves. And so that's not ever going to do any kind of good machining with that post not locking in. It doesn't matter how tight you make that, it's always going to wiggle. So that's a big problem. Like I said, I got it so tight I messed my little handle up. And the problem is, is that they have just slotted this thing out. So you can see it's just loose as can be. And even when the piston comes out in the center right there, it's just not squaring it up. And so you tighten it up, and it's just loose. And then if you put any load on it, it'll actually back it back out. So that one doesn't do very good. We can put another one on there and see that they're all pretty much the same, even over on this side. If I put the uh, parting tool on, you can see the parting tool is still loose so I don't know what you're ever going to get as far as accuracy or keeping these tools in line because every time you come out it's going to wiggle so we got to fix this I thought about just throwing it in the trash and buying another one but I think we might be able to save it and I'd like to say I'm not going to do much heavy cutting on this uh, little old lathe so I think it being aluminum is not a big deal we just got to get it so the tools will tighten up.
And you may know what those are. Those are uh, concrete nails, and they're hardened concrete nails. But they have a nice little taper on them. So I think what I'm going to do is when I put the tool in, I'm going to have to uh, put these tapers right here somewhere and push out. And then that way I can get rid of that looseness that's in there. I can just push out on these. So we'll see. So we're going to get set up over here. So I got two of them and uh, made them all pretty. Got them machined down a little bit. And so I think I'm going to try to put those right there and see if I can't push out. That way all I got to do is put the tool in, put those down in there, give them a little thump thump and tighten that up and I bet you it's going to hold that. So let's get set up over there uh, on the mill and see if we can't machine these little tool holders out so that we can make them where they're nice and stable. And I'm also going to have to fix my little handle now because I messed it up. All right, so before we go over to the mill, I got to figure out where I want to put these little slides right here, my hardened uh, concrete nails. And so I'm thinking I can get them right out to the edge right there of the tool. That way it'll hit the post. So all I'm going to do is grab a scribe. And I'm going to scribe lines right here so I know where to hit on the mill. And we'll put them over here. And we'll scribe this line. So there we go. So now we got kind of the max there. And what I want to do is stay inside those when I cut my grooves for my little tapers. So I'm going to cut some slots in there, and that way I can slip those tapers in there. So now we'll head over to the mill. All right, so we are over at the mill now. And so i got to cut an angle or a slot in there that mimics my little uh, tapers on these uh, concrete nails. So the easiest way to do that is just put the concrete nails down in the bottom, and then I want the deep side to be up so it'll slip down in there so I'm just going to put that on top of the concrete nails and what that's going to do is force an angle on the tool holder so when I come down and mill it it's going to have the proper slope to it so that little key will fit in there All right. Now, we got a little slot in there, and it should be the depth of our little nail. So all we got to do is repeat that again for the other side, and I'm going to mark where I ended up. All right, so there we are with our little slots machined in our part. Now let's head back over here to the lathe and see how this all goes. All right, so we are back over to the lathe with our little block that we machined so we can put our concrete uh, nail tapers in there. So now let's set it up and set him in there and you can see it jiggly jiggly. My little handle's gone almost so still won't lock down. But now I can put my two tapers in there. And then you can tighten the tool post down and just kind of thump them. And it locks it down. So now she's nice and tight. I don't have any issues with that tool moving because now it's pushed out against the uh, dovetail. So if you want to get it off, all you do is just put your screwdriver underneath the bottom of it and push one up and then unlock it and it slides right off there so there we go a couple of uh, concrete hardened uh, nails and a couple of slots and we'll just have to do that for each of the other little tool holders and we should be in pretty good shape so now we can cut something other than maybe peanut butter so like i say i guess it's worth the 50 bucks but if i had to do it again i probably would have spent 100 and uh, got one that was a little bit better than this. But 
I can't complain for 50 bucks. Like I say, I wouldn't have made it for $50. So if I can just do that, modify it, maybe it'll be all right. All right. So last on the list is to fix that junky little handle that uh, almost broke off trying to get it to lock down before I made my concrete nail tapers. And so you can see the only thing holding the little handle on was about that much. There's hardly anything. So got the little handle chucked up in here. And what we're going to do is replace that little short guy that only had about three threads holding it with one that's a little bit longer. And now that we have uh, the tapers, now I don't have to pull down so hard on this. So we'll make that a little bit longer and hopefully this will work. So it turns out it's like a M5 by 0.8 or something like that. So all I'm going to do is come in here and try to recatch those threads with my uh, tap. If I can re-hit those. There we go. I believe we got them. And then we're just going to put a tap handle on that. And see if we can't just tap that out. Yep. Now let's move our slide out of the way here. See if we can see how deep we got to go. Just about perfect. We tighten that down. There. So now we got a more solid handle. All right, so let's get that out of there, get it all put back together, and show the finished results here in just a second. All right, so we got all of our fixes done. Each of our little tools, they now have the slots. I got my two uh, concrete nails. And so we're going to set up on here. We also got our handle thread it a little bit deeper so let's drop it down on there and then we're going to hold against this and just thump those in make sure they're good check our center all right so let's come in here and make us a cut and just see if this guy is stable now there we go i don't feel any movement It's cutting along pretty smooth. We'll let it cut that and see what it's doing. But yeah, everything feels tight. No vibration. Well, there we go. She looks pretty good. Nice and smooth. Let's cut out on this end way out here and see what it does. Not recommended, but... Let's just see what it does. It's even all the way out there, way beyond where you'd normally be cutting. Still cutting really smooth. Well, alrighty. There you have it. How to fix one of these uh, low cost quick change tool holders. So now we got all of our little tool holders set up with their little grooves in them. And we should be good to go. Well, alrighty. Well, thanks for watching.